Hey everybody, Shavin Nobody Else's Auto, back at one of the coolest places on earth, here with Doug Prey at the Auburn Corduzberg Company. We get down here every so often, and every time I'm here, it just blows my mind, Doug. You have so much cool stuff here every time. Well, this is the factory. We've been here now over 63 years in this same building. So people who came here 63 years ago walk in and go, oh, it looks just the same, but yet it's really not just the same because so many new projects and all the things that have changed over the years. We got down to, at one point, got down to, uh, the we had a full 100 employees back when we were building the cord in the 60s, in 1965, 66. Uh, when we were building the Auburns here, we had somewhere around 20 employees. Over the years, as dad was retiring and slowing down, he built the last production car in 1981 here and uh, and we still have that car and then it got down to it with just him and one other gentleman here then after he passed away i took over the company and we built it back up we now have 15 employees we're the number one supplier of auburn cord parts in the entire world um we uh, restored over a dozen cars we've never gotten anything but a first place out of the cars we specialize of course in auburn cords and duesenbergs and here we are with a car that is actually the last car my father built after the production car. So he built this for himself. And then when he passed away, we sold it, but it's come back into the shop for service. So, so this was the last show it off. second generation. Well, it's car. not really second generation. So we've got a little bit of story behind this. The second generation cars are the cars built on the original Auburn and Cord trademark. And they were built with all modern components. They were uh, big block Ford engines on the Auburns, mostly 460s on a Ford chassis. And so they were a brand new car that looked like 1936, still carrying the original Auburn name. So we call them second generation cars. Uh, this is an original 1931 Auburn. The car that he made was the 1935-36. This would be 1931, 1932, 1933. Originally, they made this in an eight cylinder and a 12 cylinder. This is an eight cylinder, but this is an original Auburn, but it was an original Auburn that originally had a different body on it. It had okay. probably a sedan body on it. So when he built it, he took that body off, kept everything else, fenders, running boards, hood, grill, dash, everything is original, absolute, like it was in 1932 this is the 32 version and what we did then is built a body that is a speedster body not a sedan body so it's a boat tail speedster so we added the boat tail speedster body to an original car so what this would be considered is an original 1932 auburn speedster that has been rebodied so it's still an original car but it's rebodied with a speedster body this, I think, is one of the most beautiful cars Auburn ever built, whether it's the eight cylinder or the 12 cylinder. And like I say, this was my father's personal car. The new owner brought it in just for a little bit of service work. He drives this regularly. Uh, with my father, when he would restore a car, he always wanted any of the bling or the extras that could be put on it. So of course he put the wide white walls on it. Uh, the new owner put the wood headlights, which I don't know how many of your uh, audience has seen the wood headlights. And those are amazing. But those that was an accessory uh, and on a lot of different cars. So not just Auburn, but this one has a set of wood headlights. The price of a pair of wood headlights is more than the entire cars were when they were new. So, <laughs> and um, these these were an aftermarket accessory. But right. a lot of did a lot of Auburns end up with them. A lot of Auburns did. A lot of Auburns did. But you'll see them on a lot of other cars and. And all the collectors know what wood, and they're called wood, that's the brand, they're called wood headlights. If you find a pair of wood headlights, call me, I'll take them, because I, I don't have any in the You're, you're out of them. I'm out of wood headlights, but they are a beautiful accessory. So and the whole can, front of this car is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, everything about the car, I mean, the windshield, the boat tail is what makes them famous, the dual side mount, straight eight engine, uh, of course, the leather interior, they have a beautiful top. Um, the only thing that you could do to this to make it maybe a little more bling is chrome the wire wheels, which was, was would be legitimate, but this one actually came out with just the painted wheels. 
Um, so anyway, this is this was the last car, Glenn Prey's own personal car. Tried to buy it back from the new owner, he won't sell it. But <laughs> is this the way it looked when your dad had it? This is exactly, except the wood headlights were not on it when okay. he had it. But the color scheme, yes. the gray, yeah. or the charcoal, the red pinstripe, this is exactly how yeah, your this dad is, did this, this car. This was done 35 years ago. This is the same paint, same interior. Nothing has changed in 35 years. So that's how you know a, a lacquer paint job has held up all these years um, and just really you know been taken good care of and this car is as correct for a 32 auburn speedster as any all original car out there i mean that's one thing that glenn and my father was uh, really particular about is making it exactly the way they did it in 1932 down to the paint scheme the how the pinstriping is to the instruments he did add an accessory tachometer, which sits on the steering column. Most of them don't have a tachometer. But that was an available accessory. It was available accessory, but most Auburns, when you see, will not have that. And then he did things like, he loved the original musical horns, so it has a set of musical horns hidden behind the right side spare, uh, which is really kind of unique. And those are from 1932. And again, that's just an accessory. It's not a, a factory item. But down to the color of every bolt and screw and nut, down to the pattern of the interior, this is a 1932 Auburn built on an original chassis by Glenn Prey 35 years ago. Um, the value of these have, been, have become you know, just, just really out of range for the average person. Um, a new one, <coughs> a new restored one, eight cylinder like this, can be $500,000 plus. This one, since it is a rebodied car, you know, it's still very valuable, but you don't have to pay that half million dollar plus price. One of these in a 12 cylinder now restored correctly that uh, is all original can be well over a million dollars. And so he gets the enjoyment of what looks like a million dollar car without near the money. And that's why, that's why dad built it this way because the average car collector could now afford this versus the million dollar price. And it's magnificent. It's it is a original stunning car. car and mean. built by the factory that built it originally in the 1930s. We are the factory, we own the name. It's the uh, Auburn trademark built in the factory. And um, so that adds a lot of value. And the name Glenn Prey attached to it, that helps too. So anyway, but that's Glenn Prey, was Glenn Prey's personal, personal 1932 speedster. Just, uh, and I was here through the whole, whole build when it was done. Um, one of his protégés that worked with him after he retired did most of the work on the car, but uh, and, but he did a fabulous job. And um, they actually built two of them. They built this one and they built a two-tone red one. And both those got sold. But this was Glenn Prey's last personal car. Well, it's a, a stunning car. I mean, and that uh, stunning, beautiful, amazing, those are all words that just keep pouring out when we're here. And it's obvious as to why, because there really isn't any other way to describe these things, because they are just magnificent works of art. And it drives. We've been sorting it out. It drives good. It came in because I think it had a little bit of a brake issue. Uh, but it, it runs good, starts good, drives good. Uh, I mean, you can just get in it and go and not have to worry about it, which is kind of nice, because a lot of these cars, people restore them, and they're beautiful, but they've never really been sorted out. They're pushed in and out, out of a trailer right. and wiped down to a concours and, and never see the road. And you could get in this car and drive it to California if you wanted to, you know. Uh, and it's it's that good of a car. So we, we, we one thing that we do that a lot of restoration shops don't do is we work really hard at sorting them out. The cars are finished. And so we try to drive every car 100 to 500 miles to find out if there's a rattle here or if the carburetor's not working right or if the speedometer is making noise or whatever, all the little fine details, we spend a lot of effort uh, debugging and what we call sorting them out. And this car is a well sorted out car. Well, it's magnificent. So Doug, as always, I appreciate it. We got so much amazing stuff here. This is a stunning car. Thanks for sharing it with us. 
and uh, let's go look at a few more. Okay, sounds so, good.